Hey there, it's me, Mr. Miller. We're doing our 10-1 History of Cells notes. Here we go. Well, what is a cell? we got to figure out that first. Well, a cell is defined as the basic units of structure and function in all living things. Uh, cells have many functions. Uh, some obtain oxygen, food, water. Some are involved with waste removal. But cells have specific functions. All organisms, everything, is classified as either one of two things. They're either unicellular, which is made of one cell, Una meaning one, uh, those include bacteria and amoebas. Or they're classified as multicellular, multi meaning many, made of many cells, and that includes plants, animals such as you and I, and most fungi or fungi. Uh, either pronunciation is correct. But where did this idea of cells come from? Well, it came from these guys right here that you see below. These guys are the ones that helped us discover cells, and let's talk about them. But before we do that, we have to understand what the theory of spontaneous generation was. Remember, theory is something that many people believe but has not been proven true yet. Uh, further tests could disprove it. So, but prior to the 19th century, uh, a lot of people believed in this theory of spontaneous generation. And this theory stated that all living things came from non-living things. So, for example, flies come from meat. You and I understand that's not true, but back then they didn't know that. There were no microscopes. They didn't understand cells. Um, and it was widely accepted, but it was incorrect uh, prior to the 1800s there. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes here. But let's start off with Hans and Zacharias Janssen. These are the guys in about the year 1590 came up with the first microscope um, and that invention of the microscope made it possible for people to actually see and understand cells. Prior to that, they couldn't. Then came along in 1663 a guy by the name of Robert Hooke, and he's been kind of known ever since as the father of cells because he's kind of the guy who first saw the cells. And he discovered the cells while looking at a thin slice of oak tree cork, which you can see right there. Um, and that's what he saw under his microscope. He describes cells as tiny boxes. And those tiny boxes is what he called cells, meaning small little rooms. And you can kind of see those little boxes and small rooms that he first saw and discovered. A couple years after that, in 1665, there was a guy by the name of Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Uh, he built a very simple microscope. And he was able to look at teeth scrapings and water from rain gutters. And when he looked at those under his microscope, he saw tiny, moving creatures that looked like fast fish to him. And you can kind of see, this is what he drew out, some sketches of those. This is what they would look like under a current microscope. And of course, he's looking at cells. And he called these things animacules. And these animacules meant little animals that he saw living in there. Then came along a guy by the name of Francesco Reddy. Reddy in 1668 was the first scientist to design an experiment to actually disprove that theory of spontaneous generation, that living things come from non-living things. And his hypothesis was that flies appear on rotting meat, not because meat just gives rise to the flies, but because flies actually lay eggs on the meat. And that's what he did. When flies are open and they can get into the jar, they lay eggs on the meat, which produces maggots and new flies. But when you cover that jar, he said, look, nothing appears. So things can't just come from nothing. That was his idea. Then in 1838, a guy by the name of Matthias Schleiden, uh, he was a German botanist, botanist meaning the study of plants, identified the first plant cells. And he concluded that all plants have to be made of cells too. Um, and you can see those. Those are plant cells right there. Then came along Theodore Schwann. It was in 1839. These guys were pretty close together in their discoveries. Schwann looked at cells and said, you know what? All animals are made of cells. And one way that I remember it to keep the guys 
separated, I think Schwann rhymes with swan, and swan's an animal, so Theodore Schwann is the guy that said all animals are made of cells. Then the other guy, Schleiden, has to be plants. So one thing to help you kind of remember those guys. Then came along a guy by the name of Rudolf Foucault, is how you pronounce that. It was 1855. He was Russian, I'm sorry, German physician. Um, and he observed under a microscope cells that were dividing, just like that. And he saw that as they pulled apart, they created new cells. And he concluded that all living things must come from other cells, not from nothing. So they're coming from cells that keep dividing. And this kind of helps set up our current modern day cell theory, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. Finally, we have Louis Pasteur. Louis, in the year 1864, finally proved the theory of spontaneous generation was false. Um, what he did is he designed a broth experiment that showed nothing grew in a curved flask until you actually broke that curved flask and then things grew inside once it was exposed to the air, finally proving that the theory of spontaneous generation was wrong. Now, today we have our modern cell theory. Our modern cell theory builds off of three big things that these guys came up with. Number one, all living things are made of cells. That's kind of a given. And that came from Schwann, all living things made of cells. Number two, cells are the basic units of structure and function in all living things. That kind of came from Schleid and Schwann and Foucault. Finally, number three, all cells come from other cells through division which we'll find out is called mitosis, and that came from Foucault as well. So there's your current modern day cell theory, and you will need to know all three of those, so make sure you memorize those, put them on a note card, get them memorized. So that leads us to our flashcards tonight. You need to do a card for cells, one for unicellular, one for multicellular, and one for the theory of spontaneous generation. And if I were you, I'd also do a card for that last one, which I just said, which was the three things that are modern-day cell theory. So technically, there's five to do, even though I have four listed. Okay, that concludes our notes. We'll see you in class.